Uh, my name is Tad. Hi, everybody. Welcome. They'd be glad to be here. You're halfway done. Four down, or this is the fourth. This is the fourth. Okay, so you're halfway there. Um, I'm going to be talking about engineering on a dime. Um, for 15 years, I, against my better judgment, spent my life in a middle school classroom. So uh, I now have wised up, and I now do professional development, which I found isn't much different sometimes. But uh, I teach teachers now, so I go around the United States teaching teachers about STEM, teaching about technology. Uh, one thing I started when I was in the classroom was a consulting group called Teach STEM uh, Consultants. Uh, you in front of you have a paper, right, that has a website on there. Everything I talk about today is on the website. So if you want the resources, you have the brochure. If you don't want the resources, you can cut the brochure out and make it into a handy dandy glider. Okay, and fly it around your classroom and have a little bit of fun. So regardless, we won't waste, right? So going green. Uh, if you do go to the website, it'll, there's several courses here you can sign up for. It's a Moodle-based site. STEM resources is where all this stuff is. You're welcome to get into any of the pages that will let you in. Uh, it will ask you to log in as a guest. You just hit, yes, I'm a guest, and go all right on in. Okay. Uh, before I jump into the actual uh, resources and, and what I do, I want to talk a little bit about engineering. How many of you are engineers? Okay. How many of you are science teachers? How many of you are math teachers? How many of you are something else? What are the something else? Instructional, Instructional facilitator. Ooh, that sounds very fancy. All right. Um, so you are more about teaching the teachers how to teach kind of stuff. Ideas. Okay, good. Um, well, what I did was engineering. So that was my focus. Um, in engineering, I always like to point out that it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you some examples of stuff, and cheap ways to do a few things. It doesn't matter what you do. It matters that you do something, okay? making something, walking the kids through the engineering process. It's different than the scientific process. This graphic is on the website. Feel free to download it, print it, do whatever you want with it. Um, the Ohio Academy of Science asked me about three years ago to create a poster for them that explained the engineering process. Uh, if you use, do science fair, which I assume some of you do, this is the engineering technological design steps that they recommend for science fair. Uh, the first thing is define need a problem. So engineering starts with, with a problem. Then we do background information. It could be the kid doing it, it could be you doing it, whatever. Some background information has to be discovered. Uh, and then we create some criteria for success. We have some kind of level that we say this is what we are going to call a successful solution for that problem. Then we create some designs, create a prototype, and then test that prototype. Now the most important thing I think of the engineering process is one that we often overlook in education. It's this little arrow down here. Okay, and you'll look on the graphic, it says if a prototype does not pass the test, then return to the beginning because you now have another problem. It didn't work. Okay? This is something a lot of times in education we skip. We build it, it didn't work, we go on. Okay? I would encourage you to take the time in your classroom to let the kids go back and try to improve it. Because that's really at the heart of what makes engineering engineering is that idea of improving things. Okay? That being said, that's there for you. I start off my class, I'm just going to run you through in uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, real quick, a few projects I did in my classroom and how I went about them. Uh, the first thing I start off with, because most kids have an understanding of science, but really not understanding of how to set up a science experiment. They've done science experiments because somebody's told them how to do it. They never designed their own. Uh, so the science teacher, myself, the math teacher, we are pa all partnered to create this unit called the balloon powered car experiment. Uh, the idea with, with this was the kids had to make a balloon car. They had to come up with a hypothesis of what they thought the most important variable was to change on that balloon car to make it go further. Okay? Every kid watched this little video. I'll run through it real quick, just show you the basics of it. Again, these resources are not all stuff that I created. Some of it I did, some of it I didn't. This one I didn't, obviously. I'm not him. So he goes through this whole video and he shows kids how to build this balloon powered car. He makes it out of cardboard. Cardboard, about 8 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Obviously a balloon, a couple of skewers, three straws, two straight straws, and one with those nice bendy bits in it. We need 
four bottle tops, about the same size as the race. They have the uh, wheels, some scissors, a piece of elastic band, okay, and some tape. And that really is all you need to build the balloon power car. So every kid makes one, and then they go through the experiment process, testing that balloon power car to see how far it will go. Let me back up here a little bit. Okay, so we go through the whole thing. We have them report that out. Uh, every student create a PowerPoint documenting their experiment and documenting what their hypothesis was and their conclusion. Okay, from there, you say, okay, that's science. So in this case, we're not really using it. We just want to know. Science asks a question, wants to know and answer the question. They don't really care what the answer is. I know some of you are scientists, so I don't take offense. They don't really care what the answer is. They just want to know that they know that they know. That's the answer. Okay. In engineering, it's different. We have a problem. We have to solve the problem. And we can't really stop until A, we solve the problem, great. B, we run out of money. Or C, we get fired. Okay? So we want to make sure that we get one of those three, hopefully one of the first two instead of the latter. Regardless, we have to do design work. Okay? Uh, design work is probably something I think is overlooked a lot of times in STEM courses because people don't have a lot of experience with how do engineers draw because you haven't done engineering classes. Uh, I've got a couple little helps here for people, uh, one of which, oh, I shouldn't have clicked on that, that'll work, I guess, uh, is talking about the different views of an object. All engineers work in a language called orthographic projection. Orthographic projection uh, comes from the idea that everything can be placed in a glass box. If you look at the sides of the box, you can draw what you see. Those things become the views of the object. Okay, so we have the top side, right? Top, bottom, front, rear, right, left, sides of the, of the object. Okay? From there, then we can start talking about how to communicate with other people by using this drawing. So if kids can learn how to draw objects in this way, then they can communicate with each other a little easier. Some kind of sketching. Even if it's not that in detail, having kids sketch out their ideas in some fashion, whether you work with your art teacher or what to do that would be fine. Okay? Uh, along to that end, I've created uh, some cardstock blocks. Okay, so if you, this is sketch block one, uh, you can print it out on cardstock. I don't have one printed right now, but same kind of stuff as this. Uh, you print it out, you cut it out, your kids make a block out of it, then they can use that block to start looking at the different views of an object and how to sketch things. Very important when we talk about engineering. Okay, and cheap, because you print it on cardstock, that's all you need. And a little bit of paper. It's also graph paper. If you can't afford graph paper, and I'll print it out yourself. So you just hit print that out on a PDF and kids can print out their own graph paper. From there, I start talking about rockets in my classroom. Uh, I like rockets. Rockets are fun. They go fast. Kids like them. They fly. Uh, so we do rockets in the class. Now, probably some of you, I don't know where my other rocket went. It disappeared. Oh, well. Lost a rocket. It happens. Um, some of you have probably seen NASA's 321 Puff. Anybody done that experiment in your classroom? So you probably have. Okay, you make these little rockets. All the instructions are right there on the website. Uh, you cut out a piece of paper, you wrap it around a pencil, and you make a little rocket. Pretty simple. Usually, kids launch them with straws. Okay, and you see how far it goes. Problem with that is if you're going to compare one rocket to another to decide what ones are better, bigger kids have bigger lungs, their rocket goes further. So we have to have some way to simplify that and to get some standard pressure. Oh, there's my other rocket on the rocket launcher. Okay. So what I did is I built this little rocket launcher. Okay. It's a bicycle pump, pretty simple. Uh, I bought it at Meyer actually yesterday, so it's brand new, $10. Uh, I went to a McDonald's for a soda afterwards, got an extra straw, put that straw into the bicycle pump, and now I have a rocket launcher. Okay. Pretty simple. What's that? Yeah. A lot cheaper, right? Yeah, there you go. A lot cheaper. Now, the one problem with this is you don't have real accurate pressure. So on the one I had at school, I put a bungee cord. I actually drilled a hole and put a bungee cord here and wrapped it around and stuck it here. So that way the kid would pull it up and let go. And the bungee cord would make sure we had the same pressure on every launch or at least similar pressure. Regardless, take your rocket, get a protractor and set your angle and rocket launcher. Okay, pretty easy. Now, a lot of times in education, because this is how we were taught, at least this is how I was taught. Maybe you were taught in Tennessee better than we were in Ohio. But how I was taught was 
the teacher gave you a project. They told you for three days all about all the stuff you had to know to build the project, and then you build it. Okay? And because we were good students, we listened for three days. Okay? Kids today, as we learned from our first presentation, they are only interested in the things that they're interested about, right? They don't care what I'm interested in. They care what they're interested in. So we have to flip it around. So instead of talking to them about rockets and how rockets work, I say, okay, here's the plan to build a rocket. Go. They all build a rocket. They fly it. We keep track of how far it went. Then again, we go back to our variables, back from our balloon car experiment. Here's the variables you can change. The length of the rocket, the size of the fins, the shape of the fins, the location of the fins, the type of the nose on the rocket. Change, pick one and change it. Okay? They make a change, they launch it again. Keep track of how far it went. Now come back, do it a third time. Launch it again, see how far it went. Okay? Now, all these rockets have been launched multiple times, different designs. We line them up on my chalkboard. I had a chalkboard like this. Start down here. This is zero. Didn't fly at all. Down here on this end, this is 100 feet. Nobody probably went that far. Okay? We line them up. Now we start looking at the rocket. And at this point, I present, we're going to build a big rocket. So we're going to use the little rockets to understand how rockets fly so we can design rockets. Look at the patterns. Why do these fly? What do you notice about all these rockets? What do you notice about all these rockets? Oh, there's science behind that. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about center mass, center pressure. Okay, all the things that make rockets work with aerodynamics. Once the students now have an interest, they typically, you know, never listen all the time, but they listen more than they would have the first time, uh, then we cut them loose with an actual air-powered rocket. Okay? The plans for this are here on the website. Uh, the high-powered rocket launcher is this little thing. Uh, this was designed by NASA. Uh, they have since removed this from their website because they said it was too dangerous. Okay? So build this at your own risk. You might have to cut that out of the video, by the way. So, um, but anyway, I've used it for five years. It's launched over 1,000 rockets. Uh, I think if you build it properly, I don't think there's a problem. Uh, if you build it improperly or try to shoot marbles out of it, it is a problem. Okay? Uh, regardless, uh, kids build a rocket. Now, I have a design on my website that you can build to see how it works. But in my classroom, because it's an engineering project, we don't build the same rocket. That's not engineering. Okay? That's just following somebody's plans. Every student had to design their own rocket, design their own fins. We modeled it in 3D using a three-dimensional modeling program called Autodesk Inventor. Uh, you can use anyone out there. Autodesk is free, I think, for, for education uses. Uh, we also designed the wrapper. As we heard from our presenter, our keynote presenter, he said something about it's not science, it's art he was talking about. Okay? I think art also applies in engineering. Right? Ask Apple. right? Everything they do is about art, about what it looks like, it's the beauty, the simplicity. Okay? So I have the kids design the cover for their rocket. They can design their fins. They can dress them up and do any kind of thing they want. Their model, this is an example of a three-dimensional model, should match what they built. Okay? So it should look similar. And we take it outside. We pump up this little high-powered paper rocket launcher with 80 pounds of pressure, and that rocket will launch 350 feet in the air. Okay? Pretty cool. What's it cost me? Nothing, right? This is made out of paper okay, and cardboard and hot glue. Well, I mean, I guess it cost me something, five cents. Uh, it also has a nickel in the nose cone as a counterbalance. I told the kid they have to bring their own nickel. If they want it back, they can take the rocket apart if they want to. Okay, so pretty simple. Uh, so that's one example of how you can do things really cheap. One thing I would encourage everybody, if you haven't already, I would become a scavenger. Okay? If you are an engineering or STEM teacher, Start keeping track of what people throw away and tell them, don't throw it away, give it to me. Because I can have kids build stuff out of that. Okay? Building material, um, paper, tape, hot glue, cardboard. Cardboard boxes are great building material. Uh, this card stock that you have in front of you, you can actually take any card stock, cover it with glue, especially wood glue, put another piece on top, cover it again, another piece on top. A three thick laminated piece of card stock is as strong as balsa wood, okay? probably as strong as poplar. Okay, so it really becomes a lot better building material. And you can build some really tough bridges. We've had kids build bridges out of laminated cardstock that hold 100 pounds okay, on a 12-inch bridge across you know, a table. So you can do a lot of stuff with that. Another thing I think is great, um, one that's on the website that I want to point out, this is the one I found on a TED Talk video. Let me watch TED. Okay. Great ideas. This guy in India uh, is promoting 
having kids build things. So the kids need to build, need to build, need to build. Uh, he had a uh, rubber tubing that they use over there for bicycle tubes. I found silicone tubing, and I have a link on the website you can click on to buy it if you want to. It doesn't go to me. It's just everybody asks where to buy it, so I found it online. Okay, uh, it's 16th inch medical tubing. You cut it in little one inch strips. Give kids toothpicks, and they can put those together and make little joints out of them. Well, then you can combine those joints then to make shapes. So we have shapes. We can have deflections. We can take it apart. Okay, when it's supposed to fall apart. We have pentagons. We can create, flex those, and create different triangles. You also can poke through the tubing and create three-dimensional objects, three-dimensional shapes and structures, and have kids test those and kind of play with those. The great thing about it, when you're all done, you take the tubing apart and take a toothpick back and do it again next year. Okay? All those resources are there for you. Help yourself. I also do robotics for fun. So there's a pen here from our robotics competition. If you want to take one of those on the way out, enjoy your last three sessions. And the bell has tolled.